Hey, what's poppin', man? You already know what time it is. Mr. J Hill, I'm in the building. Let's get this straight. Uh, special guest, very, very special guest, man. We done seen this young lady grow. Uh, Baltimore representative. She's been on TV. She's been doing radio. She's been on tours. It's crazy, man. My homie, my dog, Detroit is in the building. And I want to uh, gift you with a sweatsuit straight from Cashline. Thank you. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, question. Speaking of gifts, how does that usually work? Like, if somebody give you something, because I'm pretty sure people trying to get you stuff all the time. Like, if they want to send me something? Yeah. I got a P.O. box. I can't remember right now. I think it's 563 Abingdon. So, do you post these stuff? Like, or how, like, because I'm pretty sure, this is what I wanted to talk, like, the rise, right? Because, like, you know, when you first start, you don't mind free shit. But then as as it go gradually, niggas got to pay for that shit, too. Like, it ain't yeah. just, I'm not about to just be wearing free shit. So, how does that, like... Where are you at with it right now? Is it still people send it? I'll post it if I like it. Like, where are you yeah, at? Yeah, like, um, girls send me lashes. Like, I'll post them if I like them. Like, I got somebody lashes on right now. Um, like, if they send me clothes, like, if, if it ain't cute, like, I'm going to tell them, like, yeah, I need like a, I'll, probably, I'll probably post some on my story, like, thank you for the gift or whatever. But, like, if they want me, like, wear it, promote it, it got to be a bag. Like, but if you like it, it's probably... Yeah, it's if I clear. like it, it don't matter. But, like, if I feel like I'm forced to, like, wear something, yeah, then yeah, I got to yeah. charge you. So how is that, man? Because um, it's funny. I was talking to Jess, and she was saying she, she think she started getting lit when she got a million followers. And to the little niggas like us, you know what I'm saying? A million followers is lit. I'm thinking you already lit. You already got a deal. Mm -hmm. So how is it... From from your perspective, right? You at uh, nine ninety six. Yeah. You about to hit a million. You about yeah, to hit a million. Exactly. How is it for you? Um, Where you at in your career right now? I feel like like I'm bubbling. Like I'm bubbling. Like like as soon as I hit a million, it's because it's already like like bigger people looking at me and all that, and they just waiting for like the right moment to kind of like jump on it. So once I hit that million, it's gonna be lit. And once I drop this music video, it's gonna be crazy. And, yeah. Do you think things change cert in certain certain spaces that your career is like new shit start to happen? Like when you got uh, verified, mm -hmm. what changed from like Detronada without the check to Detronada with the check? Like people started hitting me up more like like I'm official because kind of a verification check on social media. It kind of means like, OK, she's somebody like she verified now. Let's reach out to her. And when I had dropped, like, my Beat Beat music video, like, it looked so official. Like, labels was hitting me up, like, is she signed? But I'm not. So I had to tell them, like, yeah, no, like, it just, it's the way that, like, aesthetic. Oh, shit. That's all good. Oops. You're a busy person. And it's in the, it's in the bag. <laughs> okay. Somebody important? No, it was my alarm. <laughs> oh, shit. That's not. Nah. Look, you smart. That's because you got a date or bait later on. So that's telling you, get get ready. You know what I'm saying? Because you take an hour to get ready. So you smart. You know what I'm saying? You got an alarm to get ready. Shout out. So wait, is that something we could... I'm sorry. Can we talk about that? Did what? you Did you make that public? What? The whole... Uh, no. Well, not really. No? no. I mean, if they know, they know. But you like, know, you know? So we ain't yeah. going to talk about that and nothing. Not I mean, we could, but like not like to it? specifically. Yeah, right, let's get yeah, to yeah. it. Not, not yet, though. We're going right. to finish. Let's finish this conversation. Okay. So what do you think is going to change once you hit a million? Once I hit a million, I feel like people are going to take me more serious because people already believe in me because I can rap or mm -hmm. whatever, but they, they need to see me on a business standpoint. They need to see me as a product because I am a product according to like labels. So they just need to see if I'm presentable. They need to see if I have a fan base already so they can put money behind me and push it further. See, that's what I'm... All right, so break it down to me because you might know more, right? Mm -hmm. what, I, what I'm starting to realize, the more... The more and more I'm getting into the industry, it's like once they once they want to sign you, you don't need to be signed because it's like they really just using your audience to gain from you when you right. can just make money off of your own damn self. Let let right. me know the process of trying to get signed and the, the labels and the benefits of it and the benefits of being independent or if you if you know enough to even go mm. into it just yet as far as like the fans like they already there as far as them putting money behind me like for for music videos because it comes out of my pocket like okay. everything that comes out sense. of my pocket like transportation for for tour for shows okay that comes out of my pocket for promotion when it comes to me dropping stuff to get it farther like they're the ones putting it on radios they're the ones making sure that it gets synced into music like like um, movies and TV shows and all that, and I don't have the power or the money to do that. That makes sense. So the different is like when you're independent, 
you got to really do all that on your own. And if you have a regulator behind you, it's like, shit, they can help. Mm. And any type of help is, is, is it can be beneficial. Yeah, no, I, I feel it. Um, so going to the social media thing, right? You talked about um, depression before and how you was in a depressed state of mind at mm. one point in time, right? And um, even knowing D versus Everybody, which is out now, y'all can check that out. Uh, yes, stream sir. your platforms, check D versus Everybody, D Chinata. It's crazy from beginning to end, real shit. Um, yeah, it's crazy. Mm. Uh, you talk, you, you touched on depression on that as well. Mm. Do you think the social media, as far as the the fucking verification check, as far as trying to get a million followers, how does that play in your mental? Like, that does that make you the fact that it's like we're chasing it so we can be validated from social media? How does that play on your mental? Um, I don't really trip off of it no more because I've been at nine ninety six for like months now. Like, it goes up and down, mm-hmm. and I feel like as soon as I hit a million, I'm not gonna announce that I hit a million until I'm like way past one million because people. People act funny. They want to be the, mil- the million followers, so they'll unfollow and follow back and whatever. I stopped worrying about that type of stuff because it really don't matter to me. I feel like I'm at a point in my life where like people are going to know who I am regardless, and I don't really need likes or follows to validate mm. that. But do you think... So you say you, you're not there anymore. You used to be there? I didn't really care about it then either. It was weird. Like... I feel like the only thing that I would stress about is like if I hop on live and people mm. talk crazy, like y'all asked me to get on live just to like talk weird to me. And that in that moment, how does that feel when when you were there, right? Because I don't know if you were there, but let's say when you were there and you would get on live and people start talking crazy, how did that make you feel in that moment? Like how are y'all my fans, but y'all got some stupid shit to say about me every every time I like it's, it's weird. Like you follow me purposely to like say weird, like, do and say weird shit. Like, I never fully, I can't ever fully wrap my head around social media because I just think it's a place where people feel free and bold enough to say whatever they want mm. through a fake page. So your process of, like, processing and using social media right now in your career compared to, let's say, two years ago, mm. what has changed? How has it changed? I'm not so worried about posting mm. every, every day every two seconds I'm not so worried about going live to talk to people every day like I talk to them when I talk to them I post when I want to post like mainly now like I post if I have something to do like I'm not going if I feel like cute one day and I post a selfie I might post or whatever but I don't really care for trying to entertain people that's not what I'm here for I'm here to rap I'm not an entertainer right when you were uh because I just want to you know, mental health is huge right now. Mm-hmm. And um, I just read the uh, Charlemagne book, Shook One, and mm-hmm. it talks a lot about uh, just going, getting therapy and counseling and things like that is important. But it, it don't really touch on how, well, it does touch on how social media can be a detriment to like just your sanity. And I want to know from somebody that's had a million followers, you've been, you've been in the game for what, like four, three years now? It's like- Yeah, about like three, four. Three, four years, right? Mm-hmm. And since, the beginning, well, since the new beginning, because you've been rapping before the rap game. People, mm. I don't know if people know that. You was like like 1,500, but then it jumped up, right? Mm. I'm just trying to figure out how does that, how has that affected you? Just having all the clout, the recognition, the followers, the fame, how does that affect your mental? And when you were going through things, dealing with uh, just your, your depression and things like that? Mm, it was weird having thousands of people that I don't know judge me daily every mm. time I wake up. It was some new shit. It was death threats. It was people calling me, people I don't know personally calling me by my real name. Like, how did you find out my real name? How mm. are you, like, random people that I went to school with that never talked to me. Now they want to talk to now you. Now they want to <laughs> act like they know me and say all this shit about me. And, I like, I never talked to you. Um, it just, it just made, I feel like it changed everybody else around me more than it changed me. Like, it made everybody around me just start to act weird. Weird, yeah. <laughs> and it just made me step back, like, is this all it take for people to, like, mm. is this all they want? Like, y'all want some Instagram followers. Like, I got a million followers, but I don't got a million dollars in my bank account. Like, right. why are y'all acting like this? Yo, it's so crazy just because, like, it, it, it never changes, right? Like, even from, like... Just trying to be transparent, like at thirty thousand where I'm at, right to a million, we still feel the same way. It's like, all right, niggas, look at me at one way, but I'm like, bro, I need thirty thousand dollars in my pocket. Right. I have no understanding. Like, like, y'all looking at me it. crazy, and I'm, trying to, I still got to lift. You know right. what I'm saying? So it's like, but that has to be a lot of pressure because even on me, sometimes to keep it a hundred, like I don't want to do Uber and Lyft in my hometown because it's like people gonna know me now. They they equate 
for some reason people equate followers with dollars. Yeah, and I don't it's know like, why they do that. I don't the, know why they do that. Like it could go into like people paying like them hire people for promo or whatever, but I don't I don't even do promos like that no mm. more. Like like me personally, I don't I don't give a damn if somebody see me in an Uber or Lyft because I don't drive yet. <laughs> like you see me in there, like I'm still I'm still a teenager. Like I'm 18. Like I feel like I'm not obligated to do shit for nobody. I'm not obligated to explain shit to nobody. I'm not obligated to have a chain on my neck. I'm not obligated to have a rollie on my wrist. So when it comes to stuff like that, like it's weird how people like associate that with yeah. money and like uh-huh. like. Like yo, like, y'all I niggas need, don't have no clue. Like yeah, I, um, you got you got Louis Boat, you nigga. You know how much money I say? Like that was a like, goal. I got. Like, I ain't, I ain't, like, you ain't seen me in the Louis store since. Like I don't know. Like it's it's people got their priorities fucked up. That's all. But you know what I like about people like yourself? Um, just the humility factor, right? Because it's so down to earth and it shows people. And that's what I wanted to do in this interview, right? Just to show people that. Yeah, Detronada is lit. Don't get it fucked up. But Detronada is still still a regular person. There's nothing wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? Like right. it's okay to be like, yo, I'm this. I'm on this type of level. But at the same t- at the same time, I'm just like you. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And like and over the uh, over the years, what I what I've saw is a lot of growth, right? Like mm-hmm. there was times when you were you would get upset about comments. Mm-hmm. Like you you talk about like putting people in their place or checking niggas in, in the comments. Yeah. And I'm I'm assuming well from what it, what you said it don't sound like you there anymore like you don't even care. Like it it goes to a certain point cuz still like I'm never going to get cl- I I feel like nobody at any level. I feel like Beyoncé even look at comments sometimes be like what the fuck like right. why they like Cuz we're human. Yeah, I'm like, bro, why do people feel cuz at the end of the day if you would have saw me in the mall walking past like you wouldn't have been behind that mm-hmm. hater 1234 account no more. <laughs> you would have been asking me for a picture. Or you would have been telling your friends oh shit that's these or not like so when it comes to that, like nowadays, like if somebody say some stupid ass shit, I just block them. Mm. But if they say some stupid, stupid ass shit, when it comes to like, if I post something about a show and I'm like, they like, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to be in D.C. at seven. I'm like, um, so you're not going to be in D.C.? I'm like, bro, I just, bro, said, I just said that. I just said <laughs> like, I'm like, you just want to reply. Like, it's crazy because even then, like, we always see like the growth, right? Mm. Watch maybe two, even maybe even a year from now. You gonna start to not even pay that shit no more. It's just gonna be like, fuck them. Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? but I'm starting to do it now. Like, like if I post something on Instagram, I post it and then I log off. Like that's that. lit. Like, that's <laughs> so dope, man. It's so dope to see this because again, I've been knowing you for so long now, and to see the transformation. And again, I told y'all how, how, how I was watching all these interviews on you, and you seen how passionate you were on people that just talk dumb, right? Mm. And the fact that we had this conversation is like, man, look, Instagram. I don't even care. I post it, put it away. You know what I'm saying? And mm. and that's a. Uh, that's growth in you that I want everybody to see. I want everybody to say, yo, Dietrich and I did it. I can be the same way. We don't mm-hmm. need social media that much. Right. Use it for work and that's it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But let's get into, um, let's get into the industry. Mm-hmm. So it's like we're starting to see what we always heard in the music. We always heard, I ain't changed. Is the people that are around me changed, right? We mm-hmm. always heard this in the music. We always heard, uh, um, people, people saying that they don't like my music. Now when I get hot, uh, it turns into that's my cousin type shit or I used to know her it's turning into that mm-hmm. to be in that right now how does that make you feel like how does that feel it's it's very weird like I feel like with other outside people like people that ain't from where I'm from they not like I don't care about that shit but like with it bothered me so much with people in the city mm. and then I used to go to school out the county and mm-hmm. like I didn't have no friends like I ain't talk to nobody nobody talked to me like niggas used to pick on me because of how I look because of my clothes and seeing those same people try to say this then a third yeah like act like they know me energy. like oh yeah diamond like nigga I don't know you I swear to god right, like, like keep that same energy man. yeah <laughs> it's, it's just weird seeing all that I just feel like I don't know I don't know like I, at one point, I was the underdog, and everybody was rooting for me. But like now, niggas see that like this ain't no phase. I'm not no. What trend. I've noticed, and we don't have to say any names, you know what I'm saying? But what I've noticed is, people don't really start calling you family, and not even I'm talking about like celebrities, right, or local celebrities, whoever, right. Mm. As soon as you get something going on, now here everybody that's big in the city or somebody that's somebody, right, mm. comes saying, "Yeah, my homie, da da da, my sis, da da da." It's like, come on. Yeah, cause, <laughs> cause niggas knew about me for a minute. Like even before like all that TV shit, whatever. I was still making music and going out to these people. Cause like 
my brother knew them from like dancing or whatever. And they would know who I was, and I was always, oh yeah, that's whoa, yeah, that's little girl rapping, whatever. Right. Now and then it's, now it's like, oh yeah, that's little sis. No, the fuck, no, I'm not little I'm sis. Still little girl. Yeah. yeah, I'm still woo woo. Like, <laughs> leave me alone. Mm. Let's talk about. Um, you said people that make fun of you, and, um, like the way you dress and stuff, right? Mm. And why is that? Because it was, it was like rumors, not rumors, but. Just people thought, people like the gay rumors and things like that. Like, mm. can we get into that? Yeah, like, I just, it's, people don't, people say shit like that and don't think about what a person could have went through as to why they want to dress like that. Like, like, I went through some shit when I was younger and I don't like showing my body off. Mm. It's, that's just who I am. Like, I feel like. You need to look at me as a person. You need to look at my personality. Look me in my eyes when you talk to me. Don't look at anything else. And that's just me. So it ain't, I don't understand. Because like, when TLC and all of them was popping, niggas ain't having a problem with them wearing oversized ass t-shirts to their knees. But mm -hmm. when I do this old she, this, that, and the third, mm, it's just weird. Before we get to that, right, honestly, this is the thing that I don't like. Before all that, you just you eighteen, right? Mm -hmm. When you you turn you about to turn nineteen or you just turned eighteen? I just turned eighteen in June. I turned nineteen in uh, June twenty fifth. Yo, cancer. Mm -hmm. All right, so yeah, so first of all, you're crazy as fuck. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we got, I gotta be careful because you might start crying on me any second. But no, <laughs> but no, nah, nah, um, for real, what I didn't fuck with is my nigga. She's a child. So, like, how can exactly. you look at a child and say? she's gay or not gay like why are we even sexualizing this young lady they do they do that to everybody like and it's weird because niggas was doing that to to a certain female artist for a minute and then now she's starting to pop out more and talk that that sexy shit whatever and they like oh she a hoe now she da 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 like niggas can't find it's like y'all kind of create that it's like the universe or not the universe but the world um the united states of anything it's kind of like they create the hoe but yeah. then they criticize it when it becomes it, right? Yeah, like like I wear clothes. Oh, y'all saying this and the third, but I finally start to pop out more as a woman, and y'all like, oh, she changed, she turning into da 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 da. Like niggas, they just never satisfied. So I don't even pay attention to that no more. If you don't mind, and at any given time, you can say, nah, I'm good. We, you know what I'm saying, mm. uh, that's the type of conversation we on. Mm. You said you went through something that made you want to dress like. Tomboyish, I guess we could say air quotes. Mm -hmm. What what was it that you went through that made you want to dress like that? Um, there was a point in time like I went to school because I went to school out the county, whatever. Um, but I'm from Cherry Hill. I grew up in Jewel Park, right there by the zoo. I live right next door to Carmelo, Carmelo Anthony. Honestly. Oh no, nah, you was lit. <laughs> nah, for real. Nah, you lit for real. I'm talking about your phone. You talk about oh, it's another. Put it on vibrate, bro. It's on vibrate. It's just alarms is different, y'all. I swear to God, I'm gonna just turn it off. Nah, I mean you can. No, I'm turning it off. I'm turning it off. You got respect. it. You got it. But yeah, so but yeah. it gotta be respect when Deshawn says she gonna turn it off. <laughs> no, 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 bro, but um, yeah, yo. So there was a point in time like my mom didn't want me to go to school mm -hmm. like in that area I was growing up in. So we would lie on paper say that I lived over here. So she would drive me all the way out to the county because she worked out the county, go to school, and. My grandmother that lived out in the county, she had a friend, and I would call her auntie, but mm -hmm. that re really wasn't my auntie. She had a husband. She would drop me off over that house, and it just used to be some weird shit that would go down. And I just never, I never recovered. Like, I never told nobody that, never recovered from it. And um, that's just how I choose to dress. Like, I don't really, I don't really like seeing how people sexualize females nowadays especially younger sexualized ones. children like yeah. that's not like let's not get to that and it's not funny and it, it, it just makes me cringe even when you tell me the story and it's like we don't even have to go into what type of weird shit because the fact that it's weird shit period mm. is just it just makes you cringe yeah. right and it's um and the fact that again like you said you never know a person's story right and the mm. fact that people want to sexualize you and call you gay because you want to cover your body up and they don't know why mm. you know what I'm saying i don't even think i ever heard you speak about that story never. you know what i'm saying yeah never and like um, never even told my peoples that like it just was something that i felt like it was something that i didn't really have to explain like why the hell should i explain why i choose to dress comfortable why should i choose why should i have to explain to you why i choose to dress conservative like now i want to um that goes into like the way we're raised in the city right in baltimore because mm -hmm. um your range is so bigger than baltimore now but and that's another thing that i fuck with even the way you make music 
you still can see the ball. You still can hear the Baltimore, right? Even when we talk, you know what I'm saying? I'm from the county, you know what I'm saying? Like only we really know about that, and I I love it. But um, I wanted in one of the interviews you were saying how even when y'all used to talk about therapy, your moms would be like, "You need no damn therapy," you know what I'm saying? Mm. And just to, again, transparency, self, don't look like I'm trying to point fingers. Like my mom's the same way. Like my friend's mom's the same way. Mm. Therapy, she can talk yes. to you. you know what I'm saying, yes. <laughs> better go in the room talk to your damn self. Right. But do you think that if you had somebody to talk to at a younger age, it would have helped now? And just I don't know. Yeah, it definitely would have helped. Cause at first, like I would, I remember, I remember telling my parents, like, "Yo, he's weird. Like mm. I don't." I don't like being around him. He was like, well, I ain't got no choice but to drop you off over there. We da 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 and I'm like, you just tripping, blah, blah, blah. Like, go, go play money. I felt like if I had somebody to talk to at that time, I would have, I, I wouldn't, I would have changed as a person. Like, I would be a different person. Cause mm. I, like, now, because that played into depression. That played into me having anxiety. Like, I don't like telling people, like, if I, if I get my hair done and I don't like how it's turned out, like, I'm not going to tell them that. Like, cause I just don't like confrontation. I don't like, I don't like having to make somebody else feel like they're in a problem and they're in a situation now. But if I had that resource when I was younger, it, things would have been different. Yeah. I'm no counselor, yo, but um, and I mean this with all my heart, yo. Like, that shit is crazy, cause it's me. I ain't gonna lie. Like, my mom's raped. Like when she had me, mm-hmm. so like, I came from that situation and it's a blessing, right? So I just like when you said it, kind of just it kind of like hit home, but. You beautiful regardless. You know what I'm saying? And I don't need to say that. Uh, it's ain't no for the whole cameras. But, like, all that shit, what people say, like, fuck all that. Like, because mm. a, a bunch of these niggas is weirdos. Niggas that live in West Bumblefuck somewhere that don't even have a reason to fucking have a point to say about anything. You know what I'm saying? So, like, right. it's normal to feel that way. And if you ever want to say something, you can. How mm. you feel, don't. You can always feel how you feel. You know what I'm saying? Even if it makes somebody else feel some type of way it's okay mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying because that's how you feel and that's i just want to i just wanted to take the time to say that because <laughs> like nah it's, again it's all like cameras and shit to the side like that's some real shit because like i know how that can make you feel you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. and f- fuck all that like niggas mm-hmm. gonna have something to say opinions are like yeah, assholes that's everybody got to be one. so passionate and so mad every time somebody says some stupid ass shit about me like like how i dressed or where i was from or whatever like y'all don't know shit about what i've been through like i never like even being in school like the little mutual friends i had like i never told them what went on at home because because i there was a situation where i had somebody close to me like they went to school out the county and they was in a situation where they couldn't go to school where they lived at and they told somebody like a friend and they got sent back to where they was i'm like mm-hmm. i like i feel like nobody and then y'all wasn't my friends anyways y'all picked on me half of the time so like why would i tell you what's going on in my personal life and that also goes into like i was saying i didn't know you like you was so angry like you want to fight everybody right mm-hmm. but that's that's a part of that like all yeah. that comes from somebody pick on you Time and time and time again, I'm, of course I'm gonna be angry when yeah. I can speak for myself. Cause I never told nobody nothing about my personal yeah. life, so like when people think they know shit or like, I don't know, somebody was trying to say I was from PG County. Like where the fuck did y'all get that from? I never been to no PG County. Like the fact that I get so mad because like I never told y'all nothing, so y'all just literally conjuring up shit in but guess y'all what? own head. I also want to say it's gonna get worse. Yeah, I know it's gonna get worse. That's why. So, I, that's why I um. That's why I just post my shit and I. Like and we I, gotta start, you know what I'm saying? Put that that tough skin, you know what I'm saying? We gotta work that out. Nah, mm-hmm. for real, like all that is it's like working out, you know what I'm saying? It hurts, but mm-hmm. it's like working out. When you work out in the gym, it hurts, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But growth hurts. And you know what I'm saying? Like, don't even fuck with these people saying, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And um, but I, I say to say, cause I started in the last year, so I saw you start like dressing girly and like getting into your, your bag, you know what I'm saying? As a young woman, the mm-hmm. young woman that you're becoming. Mm-hmm. And um, do you think that those opinions had some type of part to play in that process as well as you like i won't say speed it up because you're 18 now like you mm-hmm. really like you do whatever the fuck you want to do but do you think their opinions had some some part to play in that as well yeah they definitely like those comments definitely made me want to drag harder mm-hmm. <laughs> that's all like like now i just feel like i'm like every time I pop out, like I'm dragging on somebody. Somebody gonna have some shit to say, and that just make me more happy. Like that just add fuel to the fire. Like, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. it got you talking about me now. So. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, now talking about the look, we're gonna on a little bit. We gotta talk about it. So this this special person, like, can we talk about this? <laughs> Come on, like, what's up? Like, how? Um, what, what is? 
Is this your first boyfriend or is it? Uh, <laughs> I mean, let's, you know what I'm saying? Um, I don't, I don't believe in exes, so yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. Yeah. Was the, first the, the last one don't matter. Yeah. But no, it's so like, how, like, how, let's talk about it for a second. Um, we met in the studio. Okay. He a rapper? No. I'm about to say, hell no. On. I can't date nobody. I rap better than. Yeah, y'all about to say that's gonna be hard. That's nah, but nah, he he produced. Okay. And, yeah, he had some joints on on my album, Diverse Everybody. I'm not gonna say which ones. Okay. Some people gonna know exactly who I'm talking about. All right, but all right. yeah, and he's just somebody who supports everything I do when it comes to me getting money, when it comes to me furthering myself um, in my career. He's real supportive when it comes to me getting better and like bettering myself when it comes to mental health. Like, yeah. What type? Person. What type of lover would you say you are? Like, what type, what's your love language? Affirmation. <laughs> Like yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> that reassurance. Like I need a whole bunch. A of lot of reassurance. A lot of reassurance. <laughs> um, food, shit. Okay. I like food, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right, shout out to him, man. You a look lucky guy. Shout out, to him. <laughs> shout out to him. Don't fuck up though, because you know what I'm saying. No, you got a lot of niggas waiting. You fuck yeah. up. We might get a lot of big brothers waiting to fuck you up. <laughs> but nah, but nah, man. Shout out to him. Mm. Yo, uh, how? What do you think? First and foremost, you said you looked up to Lauren Hill. Mm-hmm. Lauren Hill. Why Lauren Hill? Lauren Hill because she wasn't she wasn't over sexualized to me, mm-hmm. and she was hard, but at the same time she showed feminine fem fem shit. I can't feminine, say the word feminine feminine Yeah, she showed that for real. I mean, I'm 28. Yeah, you look. I'm over 10 years. I can't say it. It's cool. Fuck yeah, it. like she was she was feminine, but at the same time she wasn't over sexualized. But at the same time, she was out rapping niggas like and listening to her tapes growing up like that made me like really hype and really inspired to to really further myself with this rap shit. Mm, but you, it's funny because you say that, and I don't even think you understand how many similarities y'all have. Like mm-hmm. you know, people used to talk about her for not being sexy. Like mm-hmm. they used to they used to say something stuff about her kind of similar. Mm-hmm. She was in uh, hip hop. It's kind of like she grew up in hip hop. Mm-hmm. Uh, you growing up in hip hop, y'all have a lot of things in common. And when you say a uh, Lauren Hill, on on the first thing I look at, like why Lauren Hill? But then as you start to like do research and mm-hmm. you look at it in the f- f- uh, Fugees, right? And mm-hmm. you look at it even before then, it's like yo, y'all have a lot in common. So I can definitely see y'all doing something together if she could get a hold to you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, because <laughs> I had met her when she performed at Pier 6, like, years back. But we didn't really get to have a conversation. I just remember telling her, like, I love you. And I got a picture of her, but we didn't get a picture so together. Come, so don't come. Yeah, like, yeah. I really would love to meet her. And, like, always in interviews, like, when I say Lauren Hill, people, like, sit back, like, Lauren Hill, because they so used to all these other female rappers, like, saying Nicki Minaj or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I did listen to Nicki Minaj growing up, but that's just but not Lauren Hill go back to hip-hop. Like, yeah, that's hip-hop. Like, like, people don't even no. Yeah, like Nikki dope as hell too. I listened to her growing up too, but that just wasn't somebody that I looked to as inspiration. Mm-hmm. Like that makes sense. I wasn't a bubblegum pop because at that era when I was growing up, when I was ten, she was she was doing that pop era shit. And I just that wasn't the type of person I was. Even though I was loving her verses, loving what she was doing as a female that was dominating a male, all male industry. Like mm-hmm. my main inspiration that I drew inspiration from was Lauren Hill. No, I mean that's a that's a great one though. Like mm-hmm. you ain't about to get no I don't well the people that's giving you flack for Lauryn Hill, they might be like 18. Because mm, <laughs> anybody say Lauryn Hill, they're like, oh, respect. Mm. Uh, what about, let's say, this is what, I wanted to open the interview with this, right? Mm. And because I feel like it, it, it touches home. You're at a point where your, your idols really become your rivals. Yes. And it's crazy because even with the, the little the little story you tell about, about how you, um how you got your name, right? Like, mm. Detronada was, it was, it was kind of like to salute the producer. K Trinata. K Trinata, right? Yeah, because at first, like, um, he was my favorite producer. So I made my Instagram name D mm-hmm. And then I started making rap videos and I started getting recognition from that Instagram page. So I was like, I might as well make my Instagram name my rap name. Yeah. And when I had got on, like every interview I said, Yeah, I got it from him, I got it from him. And then one day he went on a tune around like, Who the fuck is this little girl, Dijanada? Bop bop bop. My fans had got on him and he came in my DM like, Yo, I need you to take them posts down. I'm like, what? what? <laughs> like, and I was like, it's all love, but like, I just want you to know that, like, it wasn't, it wasn't me trying to jack your name. Like, I always made sure I pay homage, but we just said it's no love lost. Like, he dropped the album recently, and that shit was hard to me. Like, the production was crazy, 
um, it's just like that kind of made me look at the industry different. Like I mm. really, these niggas is really not rooting for me. <laughs> it got like that has to make you. It has to hurt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that hurt. On, bad. On side, Cause like it's somebody that you looked up to, and for them to come at you and say, take that down, it's like God damn. Like I, I look at you as partially inspiration, and the mm-hmm. fact that you feel like that, that has to hurt. But it's other people as well that I'm pretty sure you have. You might not hate. But I want to know how you feel because working on your album, right? You mm-hmm. had a couple names that you that, that could have been working with, right? Yeah. And to see that fall through, and you have nobody on there, it just ended up being everybody from the city, mm-hmm. and it, it's, it's dope that it happened. But how, how frustrating is that? That was frustrating as hell. Um, the people that I wanted on the album, it was three people I wanted. You don't have to say their names. Oh, okay. I wanted, <laughs> I wanted three people. Because we might can get, listen, yeah. it's business, so we might can get I'm them still, on the next yeah, one. Yeah, I'm still cool yeah, so with two of them. Keep, like, keep um, the names, keep the names to yourself. it was three of them. The one person, they just totally just, like, ditched me, did not, had no contact, whatever. But it was no love laws. But the two of them, they actually told me why they couldn't get the verses back. Like, yo, we working on an album right now. I'm going on tour. I'm blah, blah, blah. But isn't that still frustrating, though? Yeah, Because if it was somebody else, Yeah, because if I was Beyonce, want... they would have got that shit done. Like, but, like, it was love that they didn't just ditch me and, like, leave me in the cold and actually try but to sometimes, explain it I don't even like that sometimes. Because sometimes people just say anything just to just to keep the love, like, mutual. Like, nah, my nigga, keep that. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> but... I, that's why I said don't say no names, but to, to for that to happen, and it, ha- it worked out in your benefit because now you got an uh, album full of people from the city, mm-hmm. and that's kind of like you're doing them a favor. You're putting them on to a bigger platform, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And uh, shout out to that, because D-Tronada is fire. Mm-hmm. D versus everybody is fire. Thank so you. shout out to that. But I wanted to talk more into that. How, how does that affect your process moving forward? Are you still trying to reach out to top names in the industry, or is it like, fuck them? No, like if I'm cool with them, I might be like, yo, I think I got something for us. But I'm, while I'm texting them that, I'm writing the second verse of the song in case they don't send that shit back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's all. Yo, so now we um talking, you about to go on tour? Mm-hmm. Uh, what are we going? Like, what's up? I'm going on tour with Malibu Mitch for his Set It Off tour. I'm um on the East Coast Wait, leg. Who is that? Malibu Mitch. Who oh, she's a, she's a put, female rapper. Put she, me on um, she's a female rapper from New York. She does... Like, I, I found out about her from, like, YouTube covers. Like, she would remix, like, old songs. Oh like, Lil' gosh. Kim Crush on You. So, she's, like, one of them people that got, like, this cult following. Yeah, she got So, basically, following. they going, like, crush me in the comments. What I said. Because it's, no, it's like, those cool. type of artists be having the biggest following that you don't know about. Like, her, yeah. uh, like, fucking SZA when she first Yeah, she be hanging out with Megan Thee Stallion and Summer Walker and them. Oh so, like, God. yeah. They going to crush me. No, they not going to crush you because you genuinely <laughs> didn't know. But, like... Yeah, she um she know about that for real, and we had linked on Instagram, and she reached out and wanted me on the tour. So we starting off in Boston, mm-hmm. we going to Brooklyn, we going to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, DC. Yeah, well, you can get a lot of love out outside of mm-hmm. the city. Mm-hmm. Does that does that make you frustrated? Because like in the city, I don't know if you get more love out of the city. You could tell me. Do you yeah, get more love? I get out way the, more love out the city. Does does that? When, how does that make you feel? When I first started, I sold out Pittsburgh Arena. So I pier six, and I was like, okay, that's cool for real. And then niggas started like acting weird. I'm like, I don't really care so much for city validation no more, mm. because all these rappers that die and get killed, they mm. die in their city. Right. So I, I don't, I don't hang around the trenches no more. I don't got shit to prove. I don't gotta prove shit to nobody. Okay. So I'm on my business. Um, if they love me, they love me. I'm always gonna love my city forever because that's where I came from. But 100%. But if it ain't a good place for me to be, like, then I ain't gonna Fuck be it. there. Why you think everybody moving to Atlanta and mm. LA now? <laughs> like, so how was the tour life for you? Is it, uh, is it, do, do you make money on it or is it still just promoting Di Um, I make money, not like, not like no crazy ass not what we million want, dollar but show. It's yeah. enough to get us from yeah, yeah, it's bread for real. So it's dope waking up in a new city every day. Okay, promoting a brand, making new fans along the way. Yo, quick uh, segue before we get out of here. Um, can you enlighten me on this whole uh, anime stuff? Because I have no clue. Like, you don't watch anime? None at all. I mean, so Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon is anime, right? No? It is. All right. But that ain't really... <laughs> Listen. Like, when I say I watch anime, I'm talking Death Note. I'm talking My Hero Academia. I'm talking Black Clover. I'm not talking Naruto. I'm not talking Pokemon. I'm not talking Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, what the... Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I don't know. <laughs> nah, nah, yeah. <laughs> is all that right. like a new age thing? Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. But I have, I got friends that like. Well, I had friends that like Naruto, but now you like, man, that's not even anime. Like, no, I mean it is anime, but like, if if they like 
they like anime, but like if they're an anime fan, we talking JoJo. We talking like. All right, give me a show on, on on YouTube that I can I can get into and, and check out and try to understand anime. It got to be good though. Give me. You a got show. Netflix. Yeah, I got Netflix. All right, start off with Death Note. All right, Death Note. Um, all right, I'm gonna check it. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to check it out. <laughs> so how how big has your contact list grow, grown? As far as like celebrities. Um. What number I got? I got. Can I say names? Don't say. Do me. Let's play this game. I want to <laughs> see. Call a celebrity right now and see if they pick up. Yikes. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Somebody. And don't say their name. I'm not. But oh, anyways. Look, that's the manager right there. Yeah. Listen, but, I seen that game somewhere, and uh, I think somebody did it with. I'm gonna uh, keep it a stack though, like. If I call any of them, because they, like, the ones in my phones are my friends, but it's only one that I'm sure would pick up, but, like, he wouldn't pick up. Like, I would have to call him, like, three times. Niggas be fake busy. Yeah. Nah, I feel Well, like... no, he be busy. Like, mm. like nigga, you. Mm. <laughs> so, how, so th- those relationships came from the energy, and but y'all are tight, and it's, that's a genuine relationship, you could say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I came to um person show, came to the show, we got cool. His team actually knew about me before he did, told him about me, whatever. He actually reached out to me later on, like, yo, he dope for real. Okay, yeah. and uh, the, uh, the the tour is February the 20th? Mm-hmm, start the 20th. The 20th, and that's what, say her name again. One Malibu more Mitch. Malibu Mitch. <laughs> is, is, is she a younger chick? Or? No, she older than me. All right, all right, Malibu Mitch. So I got to get up on Malibu Mitch mm-hmm. and... Anime. What's Death the name Note. of the show? Death Netflix? Note. Death Note. Yeah. All right, bet. Hopefully, <laughs> I'm gonna send you. I'm gonna send you a playlist. All right. Hopefully, y'all can uh, get into. Uh, hopefully, I'll get an uh, interview with Malibu Mitch one day, and I'm like, Yo, these are not. A- <laughs> who, who, who are some some um some other female artists that you like right now? They might. They don't have to be celebrities. Somebody might want to up and coming. On up and up. Um, I like Kilo Latisha. She's okay. from DC. Okay. Um, I like Tierra Wack. Of course. I like Philly. Rico. Rico Nasty. DMV. Um, Megan Thee Stallion on fire right now. Um, uh, BK the ruler. She from Atlanta. She she like more like she bubbling for real. Mm-hmm. Um, hook is hard. Yeah, it's, it's a bunch of female. So you really in the streets? Man. You really got your ears to the streets? Mm-hmm. Who you listening to? Do you listen to all of them as well? Mm-hmm. I listen to BK the ruler the most though. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna check them. I'm gonna check out those three. I ain't gonna say the name. I'm gonna just look at the interview and let me <laughs> three, cause I don't remember. But you already know, man. I appreciate you uh, for coming through. Thank you for Cash having Land. Me. Make sure y'all shop Cash Land. Uh, shop dot Cash Land on Instagram. Uh, you can go to cashland dot com. Um, uh, one word. About to hit a million followers soon. Get me to a million. I'm not playing. You already know, Mr. J Hill. Let's get this straight. We out. It's a wrap. <laughs>